I moved to the big desk in the office, as right. you, some of you may have noticed. And there's a drawer on this side uh -huh. that is just full of cords. Uh huh. And I don't know what any of them go to. <laughs> it's a -la -la. cord graveyard. And the only person who does know, I need a -la -la. Ouija board to ask. <laughs> you could ask me. I could tell you. So I don't know if I throw all these cords away. Okay. What, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take pictures of the ends of the cords. Okay. Send me those pictures, and I'll tell you what they are and whether you need to keep it or not. Okay. Because I promise Cause like, you, I I know what every single cord in there is. I promise you. Okay. Because, you know, I would love to use that drawer, but... <laughs> I mean, for right now, just open the drawer, put a pillow in it, and Simba come in and just hang out. He's currently sitting on his decoy keyboard. That's true, yeah. He's, he, he hopped up like as soon as we logged on. Oh, we're, we're leaving because we heard Peggy and Valkyrie fighting. Okay. Ah, uh, no, it's, it's, I, I have, I have, okay. You're, you're going to, I'm such a geek about this stuff. I've got, you know, those cube storage things with the unfold, yeah. the cloth with, yeah, I've got one right here and I've got a box. With, I've got a box for audio video cords, and inside there's Ziploc bags, each one of them labeled what the cords are in individual labeled bags. I've got one for USB stuff. I've got one for if anyone in this house needs a cord, it's all organized. You just go in there looking for whatever's in there. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. And I mean, he did that with all the important night. Like to my right is a file cabinet with like his tax records going back 20 years. Oh, I ain't got any of that. <laughs> Every piece of paper I could possibly <laughs> need is in a labeled folder in this file cabinet. The cat's medical records from the day they came home. Like, all the important night is very well organized. Yeah, I don't do dead trees. Night. Like this drawer of cords. I can organize the unimportant night. That's, that's, that's <laughs> my, that's my oeuvre. That's, that's, you know, that's. I'm right there. I can't, I can't complain because the really important night was left very That's true. well organized. But, no, serious. Uh, I'm serious. Go through them. Take pictures on your iPhone, like both ends of one cord, and I'll be able to tell you what if, if it's like useless or whatever. Okay. So I also have to get headphones that plug into this computer because. Doesn't have a headphone jack, does it? No, and it's not a lightning jack either. Is it a USB-C? It's a brand new. Yeah. Then it's USB C. It's a whole new jack. Because <laughs> I'm an Apple user. Shut the fuck up about it. It's uh, we can we can find USB C to headphone it. We can find something. I'm sure. Yeah. We'll get... So if you're echoing, that's why I apologize. I haven't gotten around to getting new headphones yet. Now that's fine so far. We're good. All right. So now that we've we've got the <laughs> just spend the next tech Q and A. It's just be like Tara sending me pictures. What's this cable? What's this Hi, one? Everybody. This is Tara's drawer full of cords. <laughs> There's also a backpack. The backpack behind me, that was his chemo bag that he brought to chemo. Hmm? There's a whole giant pocket in there also full of cords. Okay, I will, I will help you with these. Presumably for things he took with him. I, I will help you with these, okay? Is that, it's, we, we, we'll get it sorted, I promise. It's like electronic spaghetti. <laughs> Anyway, let's get the intro. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible things, bring back your ear for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And sometimes on the show, we have something that's never happened before on the show. It's rare anymore. And every time it happens, it's terrible. Yeah, because it's like, wow, really? Oh, let's move that over here. Yeah, every every time it happens, it's a terrible thing. This is probably one of the freakiest fucking things. Okay, we have seen people hide in ceilings from law enforcement. We have seen people jump in canals. This is the first time ever that someone has decided the best way to avoid law enforcement was to burrow up the ass of a teddy bear. Rochdale car thief tried to hide from police inside teddy bear. And 
Yeah. Yeah. Car thief who tried this, to evade. This is why that teddy bear on that episode of Supernatural shot himself in the head. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the tea parties. Car thief who tried to evade police by hiding inside a teddy bear has been sentenced. Joshua Dobson, who was wanted for theft and driving offenses, tried to fool Greater Manchester Police during a search of a house in Rochdale in July. However, the four said officers, quote, noticed a large bear breathing and found the 18 year old hidden inside. Now that is a moment when you're in pursuit of a suspect. When you notice the stuffed animal is breathing. And I don't care what the context for the situation for just a split second. Your brain goes, what the fuck? And you find out who on that police force does watch Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> and who doesn't? What? Someone is very upset. <laughs> Don't go. Yeah. All right. It's novel. I'll give it to you. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Okay. A four spokesman said Dobson sought by us after stealing a car in May and not paying for fuel the same day. He said Dobson Dawson was now quote Dobson was now quote stuffed behind bars being convicted of car theft. Quote, hopefully he has a bearable time inside. <laughs> really? The best day of that dude's whole career. All cops are bastards, right there. I <laughs> fuck you. You know who that cop is? That's the sidekick character from Hot Fuzz. <laughs> And that is the best day of his life. He didn't even take the stuffing out. How do you get yourself inside the bear if you don't take the stuffing out? <sighs> we don't know. He might have taken some of it out. Good Lord, that poor bear's butt. Also, that is like a tub girl shot of that bear. Right? That's, oh boy. That's old internet. Yeah. Whippersnappers. Don't Google it. Google it. You will be upset. Google it. Google it with your parents. Auntie Tara did not tell you to Google it. That's on Uncle Nash. No, no, no. Google it with your parents because then, you know, you're, 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 it's parental supervision. Okay, right? They'll, they'll help. Okay. Not Auntie Tara, just so you know. All right. This is going to get a little off there, but follow, follow along here. Um, are you aware of what a cargo cult is? Men who defend cargo shorts to me. Close. Now it's and it's it's possibly an erroneous description of this phenomenon. The idea was uh, it was first identified on um, Pacific Islands uh, in and around the war, I believe. Um, they noticed the, the natives and and the indigenous peoples noticed that the cargo planes would come in and drop off goods, and they noticed the men out in the field waving semaphore flags. So what they would do is they built their own tower and they would go out and wave their own handmade flags around in the idea that if they performed the same actions in the same way, it would have the same result. Like they would try to steal the plane? No. The, or they thought a new plane would come? Did they yes, thought that? They, the yes, they thought they would summon a plane and leave cargo for them. So the, the term cargo cult. Now, I don't know how erroneous it is, but that's where the term derives from. That if you do a thing, going through the motions, it, 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 it's what inspires the, the reaction, not a real chain of cause and effect. And I trust, trust me, there's a reason, because this is also related to the, the hand-drawn license plates we have seen quite so often. But this one is, is just a step beyond, I believe. Um... Crudely drawn inspection sticker before, uh, prompts arrest of Johnstown man. Oh, I'll let me give you the yeah you got the link. you need the link it helps. Um, and the, the picture is amazing. What? Sure. What? You can't even say an effort was made. No, it really wasn't. Uh, Johnstown man is arrested with felony forgery. Really? You call that a forgery? After state troopers said they found fake inspection sticker on the vehicle, 
He's just the latest person allegedly caught with a handmade inspection sticker. Seems unlikely that state trooper needed a second opinion before charging a man with having a forged inspection sticker on the vehicle he was driving Tuesday. The alleged fake found of the vehicle driven by 30-year-old Johnstown man appeared to be made by someone who took magic marker to a post-it note. The crude lettering was difficult to read. He went over it. Look at look at that. He wrote over it. That year is not big enough. He wrote over it. <laughs> Troopers did not immediately say where the 337 traffic stop occurred, but the man will face a felony charge of criminal possession of forged instrument. It was given an appearance, sick and release. It's not the first time in recent weeks that a driver in Fulton County has been caught with an obviously fake inspection sticker. There's three of them. There's fucking three of them. What? Months. Say what? The second one didn't even bother to write in the months. No, it just drew little squiggles. Be like, it's, that'll do. That'll fucking do. No one's actually checking these things. Yes, they are. Good do God. You know the part is, we live in the age of the internet, right? Yeah. We all have these little fucking things in our pocket. Yeah. Yeah, we do. That can give you a picture of any fucking thing at any fucking time. Anything at any fucking time. You could definitely fucking Google New York State inspection sticker. Mm -hmm. And there will be a picture of one yep. that you can print out yep. and tape to your fucking windshield. Yeah, in fact, I'm not saying you should do that because <laughs> for legal purposes, you shouldn't. But it would be plausible, you know, right? An effort would not just like get in a fucking post it and be like, this will be fine. I don't have to do any more than this. Bare minimum, but it would. Okay, I have done not for you know forging a license, but for my amplifier, they used to have these little charts inside the amps from back in the sixties and whatnot that would show what tubes went where, and they were kind of they're kind of like you know a little finishing touch. So what I had to do to get one for my particular model was I went on the internet, I found pictures, I even had to straighten it out in, in Photoshop a little bit, and then I printed one out. It's not hard. It took me less than an hour. And your ass is here with like, didn't even fucking write in the fucking months, you fucking goober. And I love it's, this. You know, it's just the lack of craftsmanship. Right? That makes me angry. Like the second one, he's trying to write that. You can tell, trying to write the, the, the year, but he had went, went over the zero a few too many times. <laughs> The fuck is going on? I'm not as mad that you're probably making tickets more expensive for the rest of us. Yeah. It's that it's the lack of craftsmanship that I just can't respect. Well, I mean, it's 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 an inspection. It, I if you like how hard it, it's not easy to fail an inspection for for emissions. In New York, they're more strict than a lot of states. Like, it's not just the emissions test. You actually have to take your car to a mechanic yeah. and has to pass, like, an inspection well, at several points. And I have had cars that failed. Like, what, was your fucking muffler falling off or what? The car in question had been totaled four times before it made it to me, and I totaled it a fifth. <laughs> and my dad's mechanic was Victor fucking Frankenstein. So <laughs> it back from the dead. <sighs> okay, fair point. Well, okay, uh, this next one. Oh, geez, dear God, dear God in heaven. I'm going to introduce you to a phrase tonight that you never needed to hear, that we didn't even need to know was a thing, but apparently it is. An illegal autopsy. Man who performed illegal autopsies can't work in Kansas. A Kansas man... Kansas. Kansas man convicted of performing illegal autopsies has been fined more than seven hundred thousand dollars. Is per permanently banned from doing business in the state. Seems low. Uh, Kansas man convicted of performing illegal ops autopsies has been permanently banned. Um, Sean Parcells, forty-two, who lived in Leewood and Topeka, was convicted in November of three felonies and three misdemeanors related to providing illegal autopsies. Now, it, it, it's when shit gets wild here. Um, 
Schmidt filed a lawsuit in 2019, including Parcells, a self-taught pathology assistant with no formal education of contracting with uh, Wabonsi County to conduct autopsies and then not completing them according to state law, including not having a licensed pathologist present. So I, I, there has never been a phrase that has made me recoil quite as fast as self-taught pathology assistant, because how do you teach yourself? Yeah. Where are you? That's not one of those you could just look at pictures. You know, you, you got to have to get a knife out for that. And self-taught pathology assist. During the investigation, the state took control of more than 1,700 biological samples corrected by Parcells. Um, before the guilty plea in federal court, Parcells faced 10 count of wire fraud. Uh, prosecutors allege at least 375 people paid him more than 1.1 million between May 2016 and 2019 for a full pathological study and diagnosis of a family member's cause of death, but the families never received the full autopsy report. Jesus Christ! Not to keep bringing it up, but I just, I just lost yeah. my spouse, right? Yeah. And because he passed it home... The coroner had to get involved. Yep. And uh, I wasn't allowed in my house until like 10 o'clock at night because mm. you could, they couldn't have me touching anything. And they had to determine whether or not they were going to need an autopsy. And they determined they didn't. But I can't imagine, like... You can't really pro-am that stuff, you know? No. Like, me personally... think about... If this guy was working for the county, he was definitely involved in potential murder cases. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, determining yeah. cause of death. Oh, yeah. All of those now can look for a new trial. Like, I, I personally, I, I can assemble a guitar. I can build, kind of build an amplifier. I can build some, some guitar pedals. I don't take that upon myself to think I'm going to go be a roadie for somebody. Okay? Even if it did. <laughs> you wouldn't fuck things up for people true on the scale of well, this guy well no if i get the electricity if i get the electrical stuff wrong i could i could fry a singer or something maybe yeah but they're not they're gonna start you at the bottom <laughs> no you'll only Your get first day, they're not gonna be like wire dave grohl's microphone no nah, you we'll just let you wire up the bassist you know it'll be fine right <laughs> <gonna> <laughs> Because nobody gives a fuck about the drink. <laughs> I just, you don't I'm not gonna let you kill Anthony Kiedis your first day. Just sleep. <sighs> okay. Um. It, oh, for fuck's sake! You remember last week we had the, the dude who stole the uh, the construction equipment and went and just fucked up a. a... Well, there's a. Tr it's apparently it's a fucking trend. What the hell? Man flees arrest in slow moving excavator while deputies follow on foot. <laughs> Washington County, Oregon. Police pursued a slow moving construction machine on foot for more than half a mile before arresting the operator. <laughs> Police said the operator, Jesse B. Shaw, had three arrest warrants and was wanted for stealing a car. If you say they found Sean on a property just north of Banks when he was operating the excavator, they commanded Sean to shut down the machine and surrender. He ignored them for several long minutes while they trudged along behind. Sir, sir, could you, could you stop the machine, sir? E excuse me? Did he hear me? You know the scene from Deadpool with the Zamboni? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to arrest you! In five minutes! <laughs> Eventually! Did, did he hear? Say louder! Maybe he didn't hear you! We Guys, couldn't even be arsed to run. <laughs> right. Oh god, there's video. Oh god, there's fucking video. Look at them, they're just trudging along fucking behind. 
Literally, if one of you broke into a truck, <laughs> you could have hopped up on that thing. <laughs> Where is this? Oregon. Washington County, Oregon. Yep. Lumberjack town. I like that the photo they choose has the cops all squared up with their guns out, and then the video is like, Sir, come on, man. Come on. Yeah, I mean, we often say, how do you escape the cop? We have, we have people like steal lawnmowers and shit like that. We're like, how do you expect to get away from the cops? Well, apparently we find out how you expect to get the fuck away from the cops because this a job today. <laughs> And I'm not one to talk, but maybe, maybe some cardio? Just saying? I mean, my knees are for shit and I can't run. But that's why I didn't go into a line of work that entails chasing people. You could just get a bicycle for fuck's sake. I mean, probably not on that terrain. Uh, It'd fall over. This, and that I, would be a tragedy. Jesus Christ. Blue Lives Matter, Nash. <laughs> You can't have them spraining an ankle. This is just following along like, sir, sir, excuse me, sir. Come on, sir. Please. It's hot out here. It's Ron, man. That's so uncool. We just had a big lunch at the Denny's. It's not a good time. <laughs> Frank's Logie. Come on, man. <laughs> Uh, but wait, that's not the only one this week. We go from Oregon to fucking Florida. And this Another fucking excavator? man steals construction equipment causes $10,000 in damage. Randy Whelan, 56, is a criminal history in Pennsylvania and Florida. Man accused of entering a construction site and stealing equipment to, quote, go on a joyride Saturday morning. Deputy say Randy Whelan... 56 was arrested for stealing a $60,000 $60, JLG forklift. Everybody get it. Get it out of your systems now. It's, it's, he was seen riding it for over two miles. According to the sheriff's office, Whalen drove over two fire hydrants, a charter communication fiber node, and resident mailboxes. He also broke several sections of sidewalk. Damage estimated. With a forklift? Oh yeah. I really thought fork I really thought fire hygiene were more stout. No, they they have you have to be able to remove them. They're not like yeah. I mean But I didn't think it was like easy. <laughs> well it's just it's just physics. You just pop into it, knock it over, and keep going. Fire hydrant's not gonna stop that thing. Damage estimated more than $10,000. Police say in a pre press release, Whelan would cause more damage if he wasn't stopped. There, there's a yeah. picture of it up on the sidewalk there. There's a criminal history in Pennsylvania and Florida, three felony convictions, and eight felony convictions in Florida. And you did this for what? That's what I don't get. What? It's fucking Florida. You know how many drugs there are to do in Florida? Right. And good God, look There's at that. There's like 50 theme parks. There's alligators you can wrestle. <laughs> look do at you that. have nothing else to do? It's fucking Florida. Like, steal a jet ski. Look at that. He is so mad. He is so mad. That mugshot. Look at that haircut. <laughs> Duke Nukem haircut. <laughs> He's so mad, y'all. Yeah, and yeah, people are he, he, in the midst of doing all this. He definitely went. This is another guy fucking up the fiber connection because you go over one of those things and that's fucked. People are fucked. That's just, just shit's fucked. Why? Like, I so often we get these things. I try to understand what's the upside, what's the gain. Oh, what? What was the goal? Right. What are you getting out of it? Like, fuck, are you at least recording it for TikTok or something? That I could kind of understand. Thing. Yeah, just, just, I want to ride off on a forklift. 
Like, what's 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 the point? I don't get it. Finally, this week, this motherfucker. We found. I, I. It's amazing. We have found the least polite Canadian in the world. And yeah, yeah, I know. It's amazing, right? Passengers tackle Canadian man after he became violent, tried to open plane doors mid-flight. Now, I know what some of you might be saying off the top of your head. It's like, did he have some sort of disturbance? Was he afraid? No, it's stupid. Wait for it. Plane bound for Toronto have been forced to divert to Iceland after a Canadian man allegedly became violent and tried to open the aircraft door mid-air. Uh, LOT Polish Airlines Flight 41 was flying from Warsaw to Toronto. The incident occurred a few hours into the flight. Spokesman said the, uh, the spokesman of the airline told CDV News Toronto the altercation began after a flight attendant refused to serve a Canadian passenger alcohol. The man went to And the- your solution to that was to depressurize the cabin and kill everybody. The man went to the aft galley and shouted at crew members. The passenger was about to hit a cabin member when fellow passengers ran to the galley and tried to calm him down. Uh, The passenger became became so aggressive that at least five passengers rallied together to subdue the man in the aisle. Uh, Video obtained by CTV News Toronto shows passengers tackling the other passenger in the aisle. He managed to get away at one point, ran to the plane doors, and try to open them in midair. What? Like, I'll show you. Flying, flying terrifies me. Oh, uh, yes. So if I see some motherfucker running for the door, not, it's not great. Now, quite literally, just for everybody's edification, it's physically impossible to open that door just because of even even if somehow, by some miracle, he managed to break the mechanism and pop the lock, the pressure is not going to allow that door to come open. It's You can't. But, that's still, when you start fucking with that door, that, that people take that shit quite seriously. Uh, he was in the back of the plane fight, fighting with flight attendants. It was just nonstop. People were straining him because he was throwing water bottles at flight attendants. He was also spitting on other passengers. At one point, he was yanking on the plane door. He said he was relieved the plane landed in Iceland. The man was arrested, but he's now stuck in a hotel in Warsaw waiting for another flight to Toronto. The goal. What was the, yeah. You get that door open, you know what happens? You get sucked out. Yeah. 30,000 miles up in the air. You're fucked. If by some miracle you're able to get that door open, you're dead. You're dead. So your response to not getting a teeny tiny bottle of Jack was to attempt to open the door. Give me Malibu or give me death. That's like that Milton cartoon. If, if you move my desk one more time, yeah. I'm, I'm going to burn down the building. Except... It would be burned down the building with me still at my desk. Still in it, yeah. I didn't. I didn't think it was legally allowed for Canadians to do this. I don't mean fucking I mean, around he on might the plane. Have insulted his hockey team at some point. That's true, yeah. And they take that shit serious. Yeah. And like they did deny him beer. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, why? Like the the fastest way to get your ass in like total like there was a story we didn't use that uh a dude in India to prove a point in the middle of a flight kicked his feet up and started smoking on the plane and you know what happened his ass got arrested because it's we say this so often the plane is a little dictatorship it is a total authoritarian state if they say this guy fucked up when they get you on the ground your ass is arrested you, you goodbye bye they, they can do whatever the fuck they want to you up there all you had to do was wait a few more Outside hours of like ripping out your fingernails once the plane landed 
you could go to the duty free shop and I promised you, you could have got a big bottle of alcohol. They have the big ones. This is the big one. Every duty free shop I've ever been near is in like this, a fucking bar's worth of fucking booze just sitting there. Like when I go, when I, every time I, when I go to Canada, when I've gone to England, there's just been like, oh, you want to stop at the duty free shop? And there's just like bottles, a lie, a wall of fucking bot. I'm like, oh, you could have been there. There would have been bottles for you. Damn bottle of double peated whiskey that they only sell there. You could smell this stuff from across the room. You could run your car with it, I take it. It would strip the fucking paint off your car. It would clean your engine. <laughs> He loved this shit. He doled it out in tiny bits because you can't get it here. <sighs> that's that is uh that's that's the news for this fucking week. I guess we learned some things this week. We learned that uh Canadians are not always that uh, that nice. It's, it, I know it's don't, impossible don't to cut off a Canadian. Yeah, I know it's just I guess. Um We've learned that shit apparently is so boring in Florida that stealing a forklift for a joyride seems like an attractive proposition. Man, I lived in Florida. I shit. Did, have you ever heard of the castle? Like Cinderella's castle? No, the goth club, the castle. It's in Tampa. No. It's still there. There's a goth club right there, downtown Tampa, Ybor City. Just Right there, I promise you can do something. He's going to the golf club. Okay, no, your point. point. But it's something to do. That's not stealing a forklift. Is my point. True. Um, (laughs) we've learned that (laughs) you actually can potentially escape the police on an excavator because they're reluctant to break into a light trot. Um. We've learned just because you've made a little thing that looks like the sticker does not mean it is the sticker. And craftsmanship. Craftsmanship, yes. Like cra- a, laser, a, a color laser printer. We got one for like two fifty to two fifty three hundred bucks. It's not that much. You could you you and all your other idiot friends could go in on one and print out me- as many uh, emission stickers as you want. Why am I helping? Okay. Um. We've learned that uh, maybe you don't. Uh, there are many jobs you can go from hobby to profession. Autopsies is not one of them. It's involving knives and humans. I I don't want to know how he practiced. Is the thing I don't I don't I don't want to know. Don't look at either. In- he practiced. And there's a much darker story there. Or he just fucking didn't. Either way, I wouldn't open his freezer. No. And finally, we've we've learned that points for innovation, but you can't evade the police by stuffing yourself up a teddy bear's ass. No, you need an excavator for that. I'm just I'm... now if you if you got inside the teddy bear and then stole the excavator, 